Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown, the unofficial sumo podcast for official sumo fans. Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown. This is Jake. And this is Mac. And today we are here with Santa Claus impersonator and legendary American sumo wrestler, <laughs> Kelly Knighting. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thank you, guys. Yeah, Kelly, we, um, so we, we, we met you first in Vegas. Okay, well, I'm going to go back real quick. The yeah, I was about to say, I hold ever, on there, Jake. This is not the first time we've seen The him. first time I ever saw Kelly was when Biamba absolutely slammed the shit out of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's that famous gift going around but um but yeah that was that was that at one of the u.s sumo opens that was the, the 2013 u.s open yes oh. gotcha. yeah and, and it made round shook <laughs> yeah it was a uh, top 10 espn uh most memorable moments in <laughs> september of the year yeah i, I, I believe mean, that <laughs> same here that one i think i saw that one before i even like before we even started following sumo it was just around on the internet mm -hmm. or something but <laughs> but that aside you certainly have plenty of accomplishments <laughs> of your own in the ring um well, but uh yeah so well, what, why don't you, why don't you list those know, off for us <laughs> what people don't know about that slam is is i've been on a a sumo tour uh, before that and we did hundreds of shows and all around in all the major cities. And he would always end that, the, the last match with a slam. And the, so the crowd, and, and none of it was fake, but sometimes I would feel that he, when, when you're in a sumo match, when the guy gets lower than you, you feel very precarious. And so I knew I was, I knew at that point I had lost. So it's kind of like, why not go out with a bang? And so <laughs> a literal bang, a big slam, fun, yeah. it, was, it was only for, uh, I don't know, 40, 50 people, 30, 40, 50 people. But there, that time it was in front of the whole world. Uh, and and I, I pride myself in that my body is durable. So I know I lost the match and it was accomplishment for him. But he's done that so many times for me, and I just am very grateful that my body was durable enough because there's there's people with injuries everywhere in all the sports, every sport. And uh, I could take it, get up, as you saw me on the slam, and and uh, keep going. Yeah. Yeah, and that's uh, – uh pads or otherwise that 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 gym mat's not that thick so nope <laughs> <laughs> but you felt it even if it you know even if you were able to get back up right <laughs> yes yes <laughs> oh man but yeah so I, I was gonna say though like besides that moment that you know maybe the first time that we saw you, you you've had plenty of success on your own in the ring yes uh, Tell, tell us a little bit more about um, your your history in it because I, I think you have a you do have a few national championships to your name right yeah I'm a five-time U.S. national champion, heavyweight national champion in the heavyweight category, and that is a record. Uh, Roy Sims has four titles, and he took third in the world at one time, and I was one match away twice from meddling, and Aww. just couldn't, and, and one of those matches was against Bianca, by the <laughs> of way. Of course. <laughs> but, but let me tell you about that year. He, he beat me in the semifinals in the worlds I had beat. Finland and two other countries and made it to the semifinals and uh, was facing Biamba. And so he beat me, went on to face Russia. Now this, and you probably know the name of this guy. I can't remember his name right now, but he's pretty legendary. He's huge. He's absolutely huge. And, and they, they came out at each other with their heads bent and they hit heads so hard that both of them were dizzy. And they were just, their heads were spinning. And the only reason beyond the one is because he recovered quicker and he went over and shoved him out. And uh, that was, that was his first world championship. Oh, wow. Wow. And then I went in the third match, the third place match and uh, lost to Poland. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but I, I am a five-time U.S. champion. I've ran three marathons at over 400 pounds. I have uh, two swimming accomplishments, the Bear Lake, and all of this is online. It's all proven. Bear Lake, 14 <laughs> miles, 
and then the Navajo Lake, 22 miles. And so, I mean, th those things are world-renowned stuff. Swimmers do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was kind of, I feel like, in a past lifetime, I mean, my latest accomplishment in that was 2013. And, but, but hey, you know, I did it. You did I, it. I, yeah. <laughs> that's, I that's have awesome. the, I have the, I had the grit. I mean, I would train every Saturday for a year all day long. I would just swim all day long on a Saturday, either in a lake or in the pool when they would open to when they would close. And it was just, I, I had swimming earphones. You know, I don't know if you've seen those, but they, they're waterproof and you can just listen to things all day long. Like and your favorite would, sumo yeah. wrestling podcast. for Yeah, I, I like right. that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I would be doing that now if I were to yeah. come back, make a comeback. But, but yeah, it, it was, and so it was incredibly boring, but it was just like, you know what? <laughs> no one's done this. I'm going to do it. Right on. You, you did. Uh, <laughs> uh, you you also mentioned that you were uh, you were aiming for a Guinness record. <laughs> um, yep. Tell us about that one. Yeah, well, the the second marathon I ran was a Guinness World Record for being the heaviest person to complete a marathon, and I had to get it done. One of the conditions, and I had to do it within ten hours. If it was over ten hours, it wouldn't have counted, mm. and I was ten minutes under that. <laughs> so I barely made it, <laughs> but and you made it for the swimming. Yeah. For the swimming, I submitted the category of the greatest amount of calories uh, expelled in 24 hours in one day, the greatest amount of calories expended. And if you look it up, there's some online calculators and things, fitness calculators that shows how many calories you expend doing certain sports. And if, if you type in like 420 pounds, which is what I was, and, and you say, you know, nine hours of swimming or whatever, it's a lot. But when you say 22 hours, it's yeah. just off charts. It's, it's incredible. And so I submitted it and they just didn't buy it. I just thought it'd be fun. But even to this day, I'll bet that I'm the person that expelled the most calories in one day by swimming <laughs> 22 miles in 24 hours eating constantly while I'm swimming and, and uh, gaining those calories back. Oh, that's wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, uh, that 10 hours thing is probably, I, I wonder if yeah. I could do 10 hours <laughs> of, of what <laughs> for, for a marathon. I don't know if I could beat that you know, time either. <laughs> that's what I mean. And it's I'm, like 10 I'm hours of around like a third that. of that weight. <laughs> well, you know, to, to help train for the swimming, there was three times that I, I swam all night long in the middle of the night. Yeah. And, wow. and so, I mean, you're looking up at the stars and you're always hoping for a full moon or, or some light in the sky because you don't care. You just want to swim. That's what training is. And a lot of times I would bump into the shore and I, Oh, I'm not where I was. Cause it was just too <laughs> dark to see. Yeah. And then you just, you orient yourself and you, you keep swimming until 9 a.m. And, and then you, you, it's light enough. And then you call it a, a good training session and you get out. But I, I just figured I had to do those things in order to make it, to make my goal. So what, uh, when, when you're doing that many calories, when you are expelling as much as, as you're taking in, what is your favorite food that you can eat guilt-free as much as you want to gain the calories? Well, you know, there's there's some apple sauces out there that you, you can, it, I bought them on Amazon where you just squeeze them, you just, they, and, then, and then they go in your mouth and then you just, you talk, they're given to you. I had spotters. So there were people in canoes, some good friends of mine that they, they were in a canoe the whole time, just right by me. And they would throw you the, the food and then you'd, you'd give them your trash, but you just squirt them right into your mouth and you swallow them very quickly. And so you, you know, you don't spend a half hour, 45 minutes eating. You just yeah. very quickly do Those are good stuff. I mean, it worked. <laughs> hey, as long as it works. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Need a so, lot of fuel. So yeah. what got you into sumo? I mean, I've, I've been dying to know what led you to <laughs> this awesome sport. Good, good question. You know, I got married in 1994 and then I, I gained weight to the point where I wanted to get back into freestyle and Greco-Roman wrestling. And at the time, the weight limit was 285 pounds. Mm -hmm. 
So if you weighed more than 285, there just was not a category for you. And I was 370 and I, I got down to about 310 and I hit a wall and I couldn't get below 310 I, no matter what I did. And then in the midst of that, the, the Olympic committee dropped the weight from 285 to like 265. Oof. And I just lost hope at that point. I was just like, man. And then I was sitting one night and I saw Sumo on ESPN. And I thought, please, God, let there be a sumo league or something, federation in the U.S. And I looked it up online and there was. And it looked kind of small, but it was there. And so then I reoriented all of my thoughts. And I just said, you know what? I need to gain weight. I'm going to gain weight. I'm going to stay healthy. And I'm going to have more fun. Yeah. I'm going to be a champion. Yeah. And I mean, way back early on, it's very intimidating. I've been there. This is what, I mean, some people don't know is what, when you've won five championships that people forget that, you know, you were once this lowly nothing going against uh, James Perry and Manny Yarbrough and, and all of these guys, you know, Manny won the world championships and uh, James Perry, I think is coming to our tournament, by the way, Ooh, yeah, I don't know. Okay. I think he's come, but I mean, these guys were like, you you could not beat these guys it was like doing a, a tachi eye into a brick wall and then the brick <laughs> wall keeps coming toward you you know and, and it's you, you've lost there's just no chance. <laughs> and, and, and so i went through many years of three years of that not even coming close to meddling and then i decided to train in japan and so like all of us crazy people do uh we I left a pregnant wife and I went to Japan for part of a summer and trained and because I just in my mind I just thought what is it going to take I mean I know I can get there if I press the right buttons if I train hard enough smart enough and if I if I really put my soul into it I know I, I can see myself successful and and a champion and so I I did that, and then I came back and took third. Now we're talking. The next now year. we're getting there. Now we're now we're getting there, and then, and then after that, the next year I took first, and and so that was the first part of this 2004 when I trained, and in 2005 when I had when I had won, mm. and then you know I I went from from just a kind of a nobody to. To, like like I say, Andrew wanting to involve me in gigs uh, because he's the owner of, of USASumo.com. And, uh, and then it's just, I've been to some amazing places with, uh, one of the most memorable is, is uh, the fourth richest guy in the world. He, uh, he paid for two seats for Biamba and I to go to the Seychelles Islands, which Ooh. is off the coast of Africa. And there we, we stayed at a five-star hotel that was privately owned. And we did 10 matches out in the jungle for this guy and his entourage. Oh, wow. That is exactly what I would do if I was rich as well. <laughs> right? <laughs> I, right? Yeah, no, fair, fair play to that guy. That is an mm -hmm. awesome uh, rich guy. Man. Rich guy. After, yeah. I mean, th these memories with Bayamba are just priceless because mm -hmm. I respect so much. And afterwards, this, this fourth richest guy, this Arab, he, he comes up and he shakes our hands and he's clapping and he's smiling. And later we were told by some of his entourage that uh, he never, ever, ever does that. <laughs> yeah. And so he was just having a blast. Yeah. Just, sumo is that great of a sport, though. Mm -hmm. It's always <laughs> rises to the top. But in America, they think they're just belly bucking and somebody falls over and there's no athleticism. And every single time when we do a tournament, there's always new people and they come up to me afterwards, their eyes are wide and they're, they said, I had no idea that sumo was like this. Yeah. And, and you can see in their eyes that this is better than the NFL. This is better than basketball. This is the coolest damn thing that ever hit the world. And we're doing uh, we're doing nationals at FitCon, like a full yeah. a full convention for fitness yeah. and bodybuilding yeah. and sports. And 
that's that's really it is cool athletes only you have to be a serious athlete to do this oh. yeah oh, and i think uh fit count is a yeah. great a great stage for that kind of thing right right and you would think i'm naive to say like back in the, it, this is this is war i mean in war that you get a feeling i, I imagine you know i've never been to war I, I am a veteran of the marines but i never been to war i'm not a war veteran but i imagine you wake up that day and then you have kind of this this feeling in the pit of your stomach, like I could die today, and and you you just know you have to do it. There's just there's no way out, and you have to find all the courage that you can muster to to go onto that battlefield, and that's what sumo is like. And you would you would think I'm naive saying this, but at the world championship level, with these guys wanting it that bad they would rather die than lose. You can see it in their eyes. I mean, the world games are coming up. Look in these guys' eyes. They, n- nothing exists after this match. They would rather die than lose. And they go after it, man. And to, to see that kind of battle sport competitiveness, fierceness, the passion, it's just whoever's there at the world games, is, there's just no price to pay for a ticket like this. It's 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 awesome. Literally at this point, it, I mean, it sold Absolutely. out. Absolutely, like immediately. It sold I out. Think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm very happy. Yeah, I, I mean, don't tell anybody. <laughs> my my daughter, <laughs> my daughter's going. She has to take. My daughter took uh, third place in in 2013 at the World Championship for the for the juniors. She oh. lost to Russia and Japan, and then she just didn't have an interest after uh-huh. that. Oh. But she, but she's uh, 300 pounds. She was heavyweight. And, uh, you know, she, she's going to be there and she has, uh, uh, she bought two tickets and she doesn't have a second person. And then, and then I bought two tickets for my wife and I, but it looks like I'm going to get in for free. So, you know, we're, we're lucky we have a couple of tickets to spare, but because that, that final Sunday night, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be awesome. Mm. Super, super looking forward to absolutely uh, to the world games. <laughs> but um, I guess for today, I think we should talk a little bit more about nationals coming up because uh, yeah. by the time we release this, it'll be within just a couple days. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Good. So if yeah. Uh, if if you're hearing about this for the first time now, somehow <laughs> uh, <laughs> make sure that on Saturday, the 23rd, uh, if you are not in Salt Lake City and going to FitCon, keep an eye out on YouTube. Uh, we're going to be trying to stream it on Probably the Grand Sumo Breakdown YouTube channel, but uh, either way, we'll make sure the word gets out for sure on on everywhere that it's streaming. Um, but uh, we are going to be uh, GSB, me and Mac a- on site, and Ryan remotely will be uh, running the brackets and stuff like that, similar to Vegas. Uh, and Kelly, uh, we we worked with you in Vegas last time, and uh, we were very happy when you invite yes. us to come out and help again with nationals, <laughs> oh, good. but what else, uh, what else can we expect? So like it, when we, when we tune in Saturday morning at uh, what is it? 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock mountain, mountain time. time it, it starts at 10. 10 it, it starts time. At 10. To Friday we're having open mat all day and that's when athletes are going to register. Mm-hmm. And I always like doing, I know a lot of people like to pre-register, but there's just too many people that say hell with it. I'll I'll jump in, and and, and we want to invite those people. I've paid uh, you know, my myself the eighty dollars advertising on Facebook ads just for the Salt Lake area, and there's going to be a lot of people from Salt Lake just coming out for the first time, and uh, athletes that because there's four weight brackets, anybody can do it, both mm-hmm. genders, and so they're they're going to come out. We have open mat and registration on Friday. Show up and register in person. And uh, KSL and, and some other TV places, will uh, they'll be there wanting interviews and filming. Uh, and then the mat will be open for whoever wants to train. And then and there will be Roy Sands and Trent Sabo and Cornelius Booker there as, as uh, both coaches and athletes uh, training. And then on Saturday, we need to really start right at 10 because we have a lot of matches to get through. And so we're saying, uh, you know, come at nine. And, but at that point, the registration is closed. So come on Friday to register. And then at, at nine, we'll get things going. We'll take a picture of all of us. Uh, we'll, 
and, and we'll get the brackets, just make sure they're pristine. And then, and then 10 o'clock right then we're going to, we're going to have those matches going with four weight brackets, both genders, followed by the open, which is no weight brackets, or all weight brackets, however you want to say it, for women's <laughs> and men. And then we'll have a, a team competition too. And so it's, it's going to be straight sumo from 10 to 4 for at least six hours straight. Oh, yeah. Rapid and, fire. Whew, we got it, baby. I mean, no, no breaks. I mean, we, we might have a break just to put the open together because we're going to ask who wants to be in the open and then we need to get names and then we, mm -hmm. you know, we have to take 10 minutes to do that, but that's the only break. And so, uh, so yeah, if, if you're in the Salt Lake area, you got to come out. And even if you're not in the Salt Lake area, this thing is going to be worth getting a plane ticket and flying out to see, cause you're never going to see this in the U S I mean, you don't see these kinds of things in the U S mm -hmm. you'll go away uh, knowing that it's well worth your money and time. Oh, absolutely. And um, yeah, and, and for what, what I'm really excited for uh, as well is just the, the, the accessibility of it. Uh, you yes. know, the more people that see it, uh, especially in person, but also if you're just watching it online, um, I, it, this is like the last year or two is like the first time you can really find stuff live. Uh, and I feel like that's helped, yeah. helped grow the, uh, the interest a lot, I think. Uh, go ahead, Mac. No, no, I was, I was just about to say, we want to show how awesome yeah. this is. We, we want people to see what we see when we watch a sumo match, whether it's in Japan or here in the U.S. We want you to see yeah. what we see and feel what we feel when these athletes collide. It, it, it's they're, they're, like, like Kelly was saying, there's just something magical about it. It really is yeah. special seeing it live because, I, I mean, we, Mac and I got to see it live when we traveled to Japan, but that mm -hmm. was like, you know, it, it, that's, that's like what you see on, on TV when you watch pro sumo, it, it was, it was magical and everything, but it wasn't the same as like the visceral being right next to the ring, uh, talking to people before and after their matches, being people that, you know, and stuff like that. It, it's, it's, it's so cool. I love the American sumo scene and we're, we're certainly, yeah. we're certainly growing. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we've, we've talked to a bunch of, sorry, go ahead. I haven't experienced this kind of growth. I've been in the sport 20 something years. So I'm, I'm it's exciting. You're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Last couple of years have been awesome for Texas. I mean, we, we, uh, we just talked to uh, Angel Della Torre about the California crew that's going out there. We've been in touch with a couple of guys from Texas that are sending a crew. I think we got four or five guys from Ohio. Um, I haven't heard on Florida other than Cornelius, but I'm sure they're sending a couple. But this this is exactly what we we had been hoping for, where uh, you know we're going to start getting more regional support, people traveling all the time, um, and we're going to get more than just the well, Texas clubs battling each other, right? <laughs> you, you know, the the World Games hasn't uh, been in the U.S. since its inception in 1981. Oh, and it was in the Los Angeles area at that time, and I remember it as an 11 year old kid. I still remember uh, the, the grandeur of watching it on TV, all those sports going on. And then from that time, that date until now, it has not been in the U.S. Hmm. Uh, it's the, as you know, this is Trent Sabo's fourth World Games. Uh, I've been involved in two of them, Colombia and Taiwan. But th this, it's here in the U.S. this time. And CBS is covering it. And the sport is growing. And it's like a perfect storm of circumstances for this thing just to really take off. Mm -hmm. People are going to discover, my gosh, I want to be involved in this. This is cool. I can be a lightweight. I can be a middleweight. I can be a heavyweight. It doesn't matter. And I think it's going to just grow even more. Mm -hmm. And it's exciting to see this exponential growth. And so you come to nationals and, and you see it like this and you guys stream it and everyone's people are going to watch it. And then all of a sudden it's going to be like, like, my gosh, this was behind the curtain or, or, you know, I, I, I thought this was so stupid. This is what it is. It's like mm -hmm. their eyes are going to open and their scales of darkness from their eyes are going to fall and they're going to be like, wow. Uh, this this is cool. It, it's the closest sport that I know to represent battle, and in sure. in battle, uh, 
I, I like to go traditional, although you can have shorts on underneath, it doesn't matter. And that's just because when you're stepping in the sumo, you, you have this sense that you're stepping into an ancient sport. I mean, football has been around for a, a hundred years or so. Sumo has been around for 2000. It's ancient. And all that you're wearing is those rags that the old Japanese farmers used to wear out doing the crops. I mean, it's extremely humble. There's no weapons. It's just man on man, spirit on spirit. Whatever you have during those few seconds has got to come out and explode into your opponent. And yes, you might get tricked. Uh, and so you, all of the, it's like the world's fastest chess match. It all is. Of <laughs> And, and you could see yourself as, as Victor or on the ground, you know, with representing that you died in that particular battle. Yeah. But, but regardless, it's the closest thing I can think of that comes to actual battle as you envision, like, uh, like in the movies where the two armies rush each other and then you pair up and you end up battling one person until one of them dies. And then you pair up with someone else. And you battle that person till till one one of you is dead. Fortunately, and, and, in sumo wrestling, it's usually double elimination. Yeah, of single. Right. <laughs> that, that's right. You have a chance. Right, right. You, you, they injure you, and you can run out, and then you yeah, come yeah. back for a second yeah. chance. Right? <laughs> but the, the uh, metaphor still holds. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. I get you. <laughs> the metaphor still holds, and, and uh, that that's I, I know that. Like I wrestled in college. I had scholarships. I wrestled in college. And I did well, but but I wasn't a champion or anything. I, I was almost. But in in wrestling, you can you can lose the first two points, get the nerves out, and then you can come back and rally and, and beat your opponent. But in sumo, as in real battle, there's no. I mean, you you can't have nerves that first mm -hmm. time. Uh, you you will probably die. You'll probably lose if you have nerves. And, and that's just the reality. People say, oh, you know, I have too many nerves. Well, well then you're going to die. It's, it's <laughs> too bad. Like, yeah, all right, spirit, you lose. I win. You've got to get rid of that. You've got to have this focus and this this uh, courage and this eye of the tiger that you're going to come out and take it to him like, like a swarm of hell. Otherwise, you know, you're just going to die. You're just going to lose. And, and so that's that's what sumo is. That This is an ancient martial art that we're actually being the baton is being handed over to us in this day today and we need you know in, in my mind we need to honor the tradition of the spirit of the sport sure yeah and and there's it's it's like you said earlier it's it's a perfect storm right now is the time mm -hmm. it's it's blown right. up it's uh, i mean we we've been following um, pro sumo uh, uh, on our show for like what five six ish years now, Max. Six like years that. off the record, five years on the record. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Wow. But like, it, it's really just in the last year that like we we've started following amateur sumo in the U.S. And even even compared to a year ago, even like during the pandemic, and even now when we're like you know most of the way, it feels like out of it, we're still even now there's still like huge crowds at um, like uh, the national tournament last year was, oh, yeah. was huge. Uh, Vegas, we had like at a hundred people there, 150 mm -hmm. people there at its peak and stuff like that. Like it's, yeah. it, it's, it's awesome yeah. that right now is, is the perfect time. And I'm really, really looking forward to, to being out there and yeah. seeing it live again, right away. This Absolutely. Weekend. Yeah. <laughs> I've missed it. I've missed live sumo. <laughs> uh, I do too. I watch it all the time. Yeah. But but in, in a, like like say, it you can have a, a it, just a metaphor. You could have like a crummy song, but if you pour enough money into that song, it'll still be successful. I, I mean, you know, the, this is what in the music industry actually happens, I believe. And it's, <laughs> it's an okay song, but because you're really advertising it. But in reality, greatness, you, you don't really need to advertise. And in, in sumo, we haven't done it all. But naturally, and it does take time, but the greatness always comes to the forefront eventually. Mm. I mean, that's what that's kind of one of those eternal principles is greatness always comes to the forefront. And we know, you guys know, I know, 
there, there's just no greater sport than sumo. I remember sitting across from Musashi Maru and said, look, you know, we were eating, you know, a couple group of us were there. And I said, look, I know you're biased to sumo because you're a sumo wrestler. And this was after his career and everything. I said, but really, what is the toughest sport? And you, you consider football's tough and kickboxing, all these. I said, what's the toughest sport? And his eyes kind of dropped like he was thinking of all those years of probably being whipped in the doyo. Guys, in the, yeah, in, you know, the, 80s, 90s, in the 80s, they got, in the they 80s, got hit. Yeah, they got they out of each other in training. Yeah, it's, it's brutal. And his, his eyes kind of dropped and he looked up and looked me right in the eye and said, sumo, sumo's the toughest sport. Yeah. And I believe him. And you, you know, people should believe that. And so shouldn't that take the forefront? <laughs> shouldn't that be in the forefront shouldn't this thing just be more popular than the nfl i think i, mean, I sure do i but like I think, it hey you don't gotta meantime, convince us man <laughs> but in the meantime we do our best to uh, you know spread the word right. because it yeah the, the other thing about sumo is that like it's it's an exposure issue i think at least in the states everybody who sees yeah. it everybody who like wandered through uh the venue dreamland uh, yep. at nationals last year people wandering through on their way to the mini golf would stop and be like oh holy cow that's, that's awesome nice. what, what is this <laughs> what is this <laughs> mm -hmm. so like no, yeah, but there I, were more people hanging around at the gates and just crowding yeah. around on all the different sides <laughs> just going what is this as people are smashing into each other well yeah, yeah and i think we'll uh I, i'm really uh excited and hoping for um some people wandering through FitCon on Friday, seeing everybody tossing each other on their asses and stuff. Just, mm -hmm. well, I guess I can come back tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's the first sport to sell out at the World Games. It's always the most popular. I can't tell. You, I was like a movie star in Colombia, and that's just because I looked sumo. You know, oh, I, sure. I, I, you know, I just had the look, and so I mean, just hundreds of autographs. Uh, women, men, it didn't matter. They were all just wanting to touch me like I'm, <laughs> like I'm a, a Greek god. I mean, this was true in, in Colombia and in India, both when I did gigs there. I mean, these these people just absolutely love it, and uh, it's going to be the most popular sport at FitCon also coming up next weekend. Damn right. <laughs> I like weekend. it. Let's yep. do it. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, real quick, uh, let's go over the details again in case you missed it and in case you miss it in the other hundred times this week that we'll be blasting down <laughs> everywhere. Just in case. <laughs> Just in case. FitCon, Salt Lake City, the, real, the, the main event Saturday morning. The real deal. The real deal. Uh, 10 o'clock Mountain Time. Uh, and again, we'll be the specifics of the stream uh, will be forthcoming depending on how, you know, how we get that organized on site and stuff like that, but it'll be out there. Uh, 23rd, Saturday, yes. the 23rd, Got Saturday, it. the 23rd and, salt um, Palace. Yep. so the, yeah, the salt palace convention center, uh, FitCon is the name of the event, not yeah. The, the venue being the yep. salt palace, but, um, Kelly, uh, if anybody wanted to, wants to get involved in sumo and is looking for somebody to reach out to, how can they get a hold of you? Well, you can get a hold of me at sumo source at msn.com. Uh, I think my email is up there at sumo.house. So if you can remember sumo.house, my email is there. Uh, you can text me, call me. Uh, there's there's lots of resources. You, you reach out to the trustees. Their email is president at ussf.org. Uh, and so we're, we're here. We'll lead you in the right direction. You know, come, on. come be a part of our community. It, it's, it's, it's just a, a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. Absolutely. Yeah. We're really looking forward to seeing you again in a couple of days here. And uh, uh, thank yeah, you. Here's, here's to another successful national tournament. Mm. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Thanks again. Kelly Knighting, multiple time yeah. champion and uh, showrunner. Uh, the, <laughs> The, the guy behind, you know, the, the faces this weekend, yeah. uh, but the guy in the background <laughs> making it all happen. Thanks again for joining us, Kelly. Thanks. Thank you for listening to Grand Sumo Breakdown. Until next time, throw your salt high and keep moving forward.